It's the NFL on EA Sports, and we've got the latest chapter of a historic rivalry. It's the Rams and the Niners, and it comes your way next on Madden Football. It is a pretty hot late summer afternoon here in the South Bay as EA Sports coverage of the NFL brings us to the Silicon Valley and Levi Stadium in Santa Clara. Today, we've got a good NFC matchup on tap between the Los Angeles Rams and the San Francisco 49ers. Hi again, everyone. I'm Brandon Gordon. Welcome to the NFL on EA Sports. With me, as always, Charles Davis. And, Charles, we look at a matchup like this. It's really the running backs that may take center stage here today. And in today's football, they're still valuable, not just as runners, but guys who can catch the ball as well. It's really the number of touches that determines things these days. Set to go now on a beautiful sunny afternoon. And we are underway from Santa Clara. Returning from his end zone is Ray Ray McLeod. And he'll be stopped right around where he would have been had he gone down to a knee, maybe a yard shy of there at the 24. So here's the first drive now for the 49ers. And they will be let out by their rookie quarterback. For every rookie prospect, there are always nerves involved in this moment, running your team out to start a game. But there's a reason they brought him in. We're willing to make him their starter today. They believe he can overcome those nerves and lead his team to a victory. We saw him do it at the collegiate level and really make himself into a leader and someone you can envision doing the exact same thing here in the NFL. Here's Purdy on first and ten. That's complete. It's Brandon Ayuk. That's good. The completion there for seven yards. And it's second down. I think defensively you're okay with that. You're in the first quarter. He's going to get some catches, but they rallied to him quickly. And that's what you count on. And I like what you just said. First quarter, can you do it all game long? They catch it, you tackle them, they go down on the spot. Because when you're able to do that and you don't give up big chunks of yardage after the catch, now you put the offense in a position where every series they have to work hard to pick up first downs and you tend to stall them out when you do that. It'll be a loss of a yard and that's going to lead to a third and four coming up. As a defense, you're more balanced when you're in zone coverage because you're able to keep your eyes on the quarterback and see the play develop in front of you. They're able to keep the quick pass in front of them and stop it right at the line of scrimmage. Here's Purdy. The first catch of the game for George Kittle. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. 18 yards, first down Niners. Well, on third down, he wanted to go to one of his most dependable targets, and that's who he found, his tight end there, to pick up the first, Charles. And he used the proper word there, dependable, and sometimes spectacular, because tight ends nowadays, they can do it all. But they're the guys you trust, especially across the middle of the field where there's traffic, he delivers, and they pick up nice yardage. Purdy to throw it on first down. Flushed out right. And he wisely will throw that one away. Well, sometimes the defense just beats you. Great coverage from the secondary. All of them in the proper position. So instead of trying to throw into tight coverage, he found a way to throw it away and come back and try again the next down. 
An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Shotgun handoff now to McCaffrey. And he's going to take this one across midfield and into Ram territory. He'll get only three there, so it leaves him with a third and seven ahead. Pretty good little two-play sequence there. You force the incompletion, then a very short pickup. Yeah, now maybe you bring in an extra defensive back or two because you want to try and defend on third down. They like to play those nickel or sub packages, don't they? Purdy with it on third and long. Forced out to his left. And a big loss here as he's taken down. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. It always helps for a visiting team to come in and set the tone on defense. In fact, when we talked with them prior to the game, they said they wanted this home crowd to feel like they had to hide their valuables when they were in town. <laughs> well, the home crowd quiet now early. See if their offense can take over and get some points on the board. On fourth down, the Niners trot out Mitch Wisnowski to punt the football. Fielded at the 20. That'll go as a 42-yard punt, but a net of 32. They had a 10-yard return, and the Rams will go on offense here with a first and 10. So out comes this offense to take over for the first time. Leading the charge at quarterback, the former Georgia Bulldog, Matthew Stafford. A seasoned veteran. We're seeing more chapters being added in Stafford's decorated career. Secured a Super Bowl ring, remains a respected leader, and his stats, they're better than ever. Now we just continue to watch him climb the ranks of the NFL's all-time passing leaders. Stafford and the Rams come up, first and 10, right at the 30. They'll begin on the ground with Akers, and he'll manage to pick up about four. It's second down. Nice chunk of yards on first down. It really opens up your options for what you want to do on second. You can go right back to him and hope he explodes or sucker the defense in before throwing over the top. The run got four. Now they deal with a second and six. Now it's Stafford. And on the left sideline, he caught it, but out of bounds, according to the headlinesman. Incomplete, so the ball a little late getting there, and it's third down. Great coverage there all around. Really didn't have many options to throw the football. Very little chance that that one was going to be completed. Every receiver was locked up. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. Now Stafford. That's into the hands of Akers complete. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. I'm not sure that that was necessarily a safety valve or a check down throw on third down. Sometimes just try and find the open guy and get him the ball. He did exactly that and found a way to pick up a first down. Now a first down throw, Stafford. Akers back-to-back -back catches. And he's able to get this one out closer to midfield across the 45. And we see another pitch and catch there to the running back. This position just continues to evolve. They become just as critical to the passing attack as a lot of receivers' tight ends because their ability to make people miss in the open field can really generate big plays for an offense. Throwing again is Stafford. Looking left sideline, but it's incomplete. Man coverage is certainly a staple of their defense, and it's built for plays like that, forcing that incompletion. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. To throw is Stafford. Going up top for Cup, And he fires one that's intercepted. 
picked off by Deshaun Gibson. And the Niners are going to take possession here at their own 33. So they tried to take the deep shot there, but this defense up to the task. And a lot of times when you air a ball out like this, if it does get intercepted, there's going to be a lot of space out there to set up a return. And remember, you've got five big offensive linemen out there playing on their feet in open space. Not a skill most of them possess that allows for extra yardage on the return. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Purdy off the play fake. Steps away. And he'll just get rid of it. Oh, I saw this one with defensive eyes because even as he escaped the pocket and bought time, the coverage stayed tight. Nothing broke down. Throwing it away, that was his only option. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and 10. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. They do get a yard there, but only a yard. Leaves them with third and nine looming. Well, that's a good start to this drive on the defensive side of the ball. And 4C incompletion on first down. Then you're able to shut down the running play on second. Yeah, I wouldn't be surprised now. A little bit of pressure going at the quarterback in an expected passing situation. They'll come to the line here needing nine yards to pick up the first. Now Purdy. He'll fire this deep for Ayuk. And he bats it away, and it falls down incomplete. Every offense tells you they want to come out and start fast. That's not unusual at all. But this group, they've yet to get much rolling through their first two drives. It looks like they're going to have to give up the football again after this one. So on fourth down, here's the Australian native Mitch Wisnowski to punt this one away. His first punt, 45 yards. This looks good as well. It's a 42-yard punt. They keep him to just a yard on the return. And it will be first and 10 as they take over. So the Rams coming back onto the field, their second drive of the game. That opening drive ended with the INT. It didn't lead to points, but still not the way they were hoping to begin the game. But how about going and telling your defense, thank you, a huge thank you. You said it didn't lead to points, stalled off that drive. Now they've got a chance to redeem themselves and maybe reward their defense a little bit by putting some points on the board on this one. Trying to shake off the interception. He'll look to throw. And the pressure gets to him and brings him down. Stafford is sacked. Multiple players combined for their team's first sack of the game. Well, they got a takeaway on the last drive with an interception. How about this sack as a terrific follow-up? And that keeps pressure on this offense, and it could force them into more rushed decisions or another turnover. Got to imagine the pass rush will be equally intense here on second down following the sack. It's second and 18. Stafford going to give this to Akers. And he'll go down just shy of the 25 at the 24-yard line. They get 11 back on that one. It leads to third down. I was pretty surprised there when they lined up to run it on second and long, but it worked out for them. It certainly did, and that requires some confidence, some fortitude, and a little bit of hope, doesn't it? You hope you catch the defense just right and break off a big run to help yourself out on the next down. And this is incomplete. Oh, uh, it looked like he had a pretty good line on that one. That would have been a big play, but he could not pull it in. Two drives won't tell the story of this game, but you absolutely have to like how this defense has played thus far. They have yet to allow this offense to get untracked in this one. Here comes the Rams punter now. Back deep, Ray Ray McLeod. And now a fair catch called for and taken just outside the 40-yard line. Only 29 yards on the punt there, definitely not his best. And the Niners will go on offense first and 10.
So good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at their own 43. They go play action here, Purdy. Over the middle, that's complete to McCaffrey. And he'll go down right around the 47 this time. They'll give him four yards there, and that'll make it second down. Well, offensively, that's the mismatch that you want. You want to force a linebacker to try and cover your back out of the backfield, out in some open space. But linebackers nowadays, they run like backs, and they take a lot of pride in covering. What a nice play he made there in the open field. It'll be a pickup of a couple, and it leaves him with a third and three. But not much on that run, Charles. No, that's exactly the way to execute a run blitz there. They guessed correctly that they would move the ball on the ground, honed in on it, and stopped them. Mark that down for a win in the defense's column. From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. Throw left side, McCaffrey's got it. Call it a gain of a yard, and that'll bring up fourth down. Always important as a defender on third down to keep the play in front of you and make sure you don't give up enough space that they can make a move on you in the open field. Try as he might, he wasn't able to get to the first down marker. Excellent defense, good tackling. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now. And he's getting a workout here in this first quarter as he gets it away. And great special teams work here. This is knocking on the door of the five. They'll spot it at the six-yard line. I absolutely love the flexibility of these punters. Their leg drive, able to get it way up in the air. And that allows their punt team to get down there and down it inside the 10 because they've had some time. Now the Rams offense getting the football back. We've seen both of these offenses still sort of in that figuring things out phase, but I suspect some action on the scoreboard soon as they start out here first and 10. A little jet sweep to start the drive. And he'll take this one up to about the 13. A solid run on first down. Gain of seven leaves him with a second and three. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field of the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. Meanwhile, Stafford's throw pulled in by Jefferson. And he gets this one just shy of the 35 to the 34. 22 yards there, a first down. Well, that certainly has to feel good. And it's not all the time that the play caller should get all the credit. Sometimes I think in the huddle, the quarterback just says, hey, who's going to make a play for me? I just need something right here. And the end result there, nice first down. Drive keeps moving. From the 34 now, here's first and 10. They'll run a draw now with Akers. And he'll just plow right into a host of tacklers. Nothing there at all, and it'll be second and 10. Now that's a mountain of a man that just made that stop, isn't it? But he's more than that. This guy's nimble and quick. More than a space eater, he just made a great play there. So after the run for no gain, here's second and 10. Stafford. He'll get this one to Cup complete. So the completion good for seven there. And it makes it third down and two yards to go. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. Third and two, Stafford. Toward the sideline, and he will have the first down as he was able to keep the feet in bounds. 
four yards on the pickup, good enough to extend the drive. We've seen quite a bit of the short passing game here early on first quarter, haven't we? We have, and I think it works a couple of ways for, for this team because, number one, you throw the short game until they stop it. And if they're not going to stop it, you keep throwing it, and occasionally you'll break a tackle and turn it into a bigger game. Also, if they start to creep up, start to pressure receivers, now you go over the top, take it deep, and now you get some of those big shots downfield. Two yards the loss, second and 12. Brandon, that's what you call being manhandled at the point of attack, and I know the offensive line gets a lot of blame for that one, but occasionally the defense just knows what you're going to do. Maybe they scouted it perfectly, maybe someone tipped it off, but on that play, it had no chance. Now they contend with a second and 12 after the loss. Going right back to Akers. And a pretty athletic run right there as he's going to get this down inside the 40. 16 yards is the pickup there and a first down for L.A. That's his longest run of the first quarter. And, Charles, we talked before the game about them needing to establish the run game. They'll be looking for more of that. And they got to the perimeter. So that tells me that that's part of the game plan of what they want to get done today. So they'll have some complimentary runs where he'll run it to the inside. But it appears that when they want the big yardage, they think they can get to the outside and make it happen. So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 39-yard line. Play action, Stafford. And this one nearly picked off. Well, kind of surprising to see defender of his caliber let it get away, but get away it does, and it's second down. How about that? Red man coverage and decided to test him early, but it proved up to the task and forced the incompletion. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Stafford. Throwing left side, it's complete. Touchdown, L.A. Cam Akers, 39 yards. And the Rams get the upper hand as they're on the board first here this afternoon. And that's another route the defenders would vote to take out of the game. The wheel route? Oh, without a doubt. You're just trying to move everybody in one direction. And whether it's a running back or another receiver, as they zip out on the sideline, you've got a problem on your hands. Yeah, well, the defenders hate it there. It happened, and it resulted in a touchdown. Now for the point after. It's up, it's good, and the Rams take a 7-0 lead. A good drive that time as they go nine plays in all. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. The Rams kickoff team on the field, and here we go with the ball in the air. Here's McLeod from his end zone. And tackled at the 21-yard line, so a net negative there of four yards. And San Francisco gets set to go here. The results for them so far not that great. Well... Not good at all. Three drives, three punts. Yeah, and now what you're doing is you're looking at your play sheet. You're trying to figure out what you're going against defensively. I wonder, are they showing them something they haven't seen or anticipated in practice and maybe that's throwing them off? Or do they just have to go to a different play calling section and try and run some offense that way? Not first down, Purdy. Flush to his right. And this throw a bit late as he couldn't reach back for it. Well, he certainly thought he had an open look beyond the first down marker to his receiver, but they just couldn't connect, and that will send them back to the drawing board. From the 21, it's second and 10. Purdy looking to throw. The tight end, Kittle, has it on the left side. And he's going to get this one across the 30-yard line. Z 
So apparently some grabbing of the jersey there on the O-line. Yeah, just look in the interior, and that's where the penalty occurred. Now they face a second and long following the holding penalty. Out of the gun, Purdy. Oh, he'll take a shot for McCaffrey downfield. And that's caught inside the 35. Touchdown, 49ers. Christian McCaffrey, 89 yards. And the Niners are able to strike quickly here as they are in for six. Boy, just zero hesitation from the rookie passer there, partner. He is coming out firing in this opening quarter. And all the talk leading into this game was that pass rush talking about challenging this guy, getting into his grill, getting into his space. And how about him? Might be his first year in the NFL, but I don't see any fear in him at all. How about that big-time throw right out of the gate? The extra point splits the uprights, and we are tied at seven. The long touchdown pass gets him six on a very, very tidy two-play drive that time. So I'll leave it at seven now as they kick it away. Take it in at the three. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Rams offense now, they get set and head back onto the field. And as the offense begins another drive here, uh, pretty simple, Charles. They want to carbon copy what happened the last time out when they ended their drive in the end zone. You're right about that, partner. It sounds pretty simple, doesn't it? Just score again, but we know it's not that simple because we don't just make adjustments at halftime if you're a good football team. You spend that time on the sideline, you study what's on the notes and the tablets, and you make those adjustments to prevent a repeat of the last drive. Series to series, the best teams, that's how they get it done. And yeah, we'll find out here soon enough whether those adjustments are enough defensively. Short completion, just four yards, and it'll be second down. I like the thought process, I like the design, but I think he may have waited a little too long to spot his man because if you're going to run that drag route, you've got to put it on him and let him turn up field. Instead, he waits until his receiver's too close to the sideline and they don't get the yards after the catch. From the 29, Stafford gets this into the hands of the tight end, Higby. Stafford to Higby there, Rams first down. And the tight end is certainly a position built to move the chains because they can control space underneath. If they've got good hands, then of course they're a dynamic target. But one other thing is they're right in the sight lines of a quarterback on just about every play. And that makes it easier for the quarterback to pick him out and deliver. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Back to throw, Stafford. Throw left side, complete to Cup. And he slips up past the 45 before being tackled. A gain there of 12 yards and a first down L.A. These two teams all tied after one. The Rams with the football here to begin the second quarter as they've got it with a first and ten. Stafford now to throw. He gets this into the hands of Cup once again. And that'll be good for eight yards to the 45. And it appears we've got a member of the Rams shaken up on that last play. While they come out and take a look at him, we will step aside for just a moment. Only needing two yards on second down. 
Off the fake to Akers. Here's Stafford. He'll buy some time right. And he's got this to Jefferson. And this will move the chains again as the tackle's going to be made at the 49ers 21. That one covers 24 yards. It's a first down. And this has been a nice answer to the touchdown drive against them a few minutes ago because they've come out and reestablished the tempo. A nice throw there, and they're putting together a very strong drive as a response. On first down, Stafford here. And that incompletion breaks a string of five straight connections. And it's second down. And not a common sight, at least on this drive. A momentary setback, though, for this passing game that has been moving well this series. Good thing for them, though. Still two more downs to connect and try and pick up another first down. From the 21, it's second and 10. They'll fake it. Now Stafford. Touchdown, Rams! Tyler Higby from 21 yards away. And the Rams have taken the lead. Quarterback loves the receivers, but sometimes his best friend is that tight end. Yeah, it's hard to believe, isn't it? Because we always talk about the guys out wide and how acrobatic they are. But that tight end, great sight lines, easier throws. They become a bigger, bigger weapon as the NFL evolves. A try here for the extra point. And he's got it. It's now a 14-7 ball game. So that drives seven plays in length. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. kickoff team on the field and here we go with the ball in the air the football will come out to the 25 as McLeod will not return it the Niners set to take over on offense after that last score we just saw now 14 to 7 so a chance to march down the field here try to tie this football game They start on the ground with McCaffrey. And he's going to be met at the line of scrimmage and taken down. On the stop was Aaron Donald. The running lanes have definitely not been there for him here in the first half. And I don't think it's all been his fault. His offensive line hasn't given him much space. A loss results there. Officially nothing on that last run. They'll try again second and ten. Back to throw, Purdy. That's to the right side, complete to Kittle. And he'll be out of bounds across the 30-yard line. That'll leave them with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives them a much better opportunity to convert on third down. The Niners on third down. They've only converted once in four tries. This time they face a third and two. Here's Purdy. Over the middle complete. That's Bell. And he is going to have a 49ers first down. It's a gain of six that time on third and two. Got to say, I was a little surprised to see him, Charles, come out in the shotgun on third and less than a yard. Yeah, but the way the NFL is nowadays, we hardly ever see anyone really run for it on short yardage. So they're going to throw the football more times than not. That was a nice, easy rhythm throw right there, and they pick up the first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. 
Now on first down, it's Purdy. Steps away to his left. And he works his way past the line of scrimmage and then slides to a hole. He'll wind up getting right about four there on the scramble, and it's second down. I certainly like what he did right there because he smartly wanted to avoid forcing anything downfield because nothing appeared to be open. Nice harmless slide there to avoid the big hit, and he gets a small gain on the play. On second down, McCaffrey. Oh, a nifty juke there. Not much fun for a guy trying to tackle him. That one, a first down pickup of eight. Even though they gave up more than they wanted to on that play, it actually illustrates how well they followed him up throughout the game because that was his longest run of this contest. Oh, they're going to run a little pop pass here. A nice play design there with the touch pass. Looked good at the start, but bottom line, the defense was ready. And they did a nice job scouting, didn't they? Not just scouting, but now executing once they saw the play for real after having worked on it all week in practice. They drilled on the play, then they drilled him. To throw on second and six, Purdy. He'll get this out wide here to McCaffrey. And he'll be brought down just shy of the 40. That might feel like a little bit of a lost opportunity there for the offense because the defense bumped pressure that time. And sometimes against that, you can get it out to your running back and it could turn into a big gain downfield. But what a nice job they did getting to him quickly and holding him to a short gain. On third down, it's Purdy. Open man is Ayu complete. And he is going to have the Niners first down as they're able to convert by plenty there on third and one. As an unbiased observer, I think it would have been interesting to see what they would have done if they hadn't gotten the first down there. But since they did, I guess the point is moot. And yeah, they're right there in that middle ground, field goal range, punt, go for it. But as you said, they picked it up. Purdy to throw it on first down. And he'll dump this off to his running back, McCaffrey. And he is out of bounds inside the 30. Just about every quarterback is trained to really look downfield first before you come back and make a nice, safe throw. And in this case, that's exactly what he did. Found his running back, let him create some space, and it turned out to be a nice play for the offense. Looking to throw again on second down. Purdy, a Kittle catching the slant. And he's brought down inside the 20 at the 18-yard line. That was a route run not just with dexterity, but with intelligence. Found the hole in the zone, made sure the quarterback saw him, and was able to make the sure catch and flip the down marker back to one. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. A give running left, it's McCaffrey. And he'll take it from the 18 to the 15, a gain of three. I do know from experience that when you slow down someone's running game, you're now doing the dictating on defense. And guess what? Now you're getting ready to tee off on their quarterback because they have to throw it all the time. But you still have to be alert for the draws and other plays of that nature to make sure you don't get hurt. On second and seven, Purdy. That's going to be complete on the sideline, but, you know, that throw left him no room to run, and the good footwork nearly all for not. And just three yards on the catch there. He couldn't get away. And it brings up third and five now. 
They'll need five on this play to move the sticks. Purdy now to throw. He's got this complete to Ayuk on the out route. And inside the five here before he's out of bounds right at the three. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. Purdy. Touchdown, 49ers. George Kittle from three yards out. And the Niners are within an extra point of tying up this ball game. Well, that's just how they drew it up, CD. His first read was there, got it to him quickly, and into the end zone. Absolutely excellent execution by all involved. And the coordinator, got to give him credit, found the perfect play call. Quarterback let it fly as soon as the target came free, and his guy made a nice catch. Just how you draw it up in practice and then execute it in the game. Point after, right down the middle, and we are tied at 14. That one was an extended drive, 14 plays all told. And it all ends with a George Kittle touchdown. This one tied at 14 now as he sends this one away. This will be fielded inside the five. And makes it across the 20 as his guys will set up shop at the 23-yard line. The football going back to the Rams now. So both of these teams, Charles, coming off touchdowns now, but this offense, they just had to stand on the sideline, watch their opponent author a really impressive drive to reach the end zone. Yeah, and I think you're not telling yourself the truth if you don't think there's some one-upsmanship going on right now because they just had their touchdown answered by a drive of double-digit plays that also found the end zone. Now they want to do something even more impressive to answer that one. They're throwing to start the drive, but that went incomplete. His back has been a dependable safety valve all game, so he went back to him when his first read was covered just unable to connect, so the play results in no gain. Once again, they'll go from the 23-yard line on second and 10. They give up the middle to Akers. They showed off a nice juke of the defender before the next round can bring him down. Nine yards, and that leaves him just short, so it'll be third and less than a yard. So from second and long, now we go to third and very manageable. Yeah, they love that phrase, don't they? Because as an offensive coordinator, you can keep people a little bit off balance in guessing because you don't have to throw it. You can come back with a strong run game if you want to, and if you're in four-down territory, that really opens things up for you. Stafford on third down. And that is incomplete. That could be the stop this defense needed to get them back on track. They've been pretty well dissected by the offense here in the first half. After that possession, now they know that they can compete with this offense. Here comes the Rams punter now as he'll punt it away for the second time. Fair catch signaled for and taken just shy of the 30-yard line. They'll call that a 33-yard punt with no return. And they will take over first and 10. Their quarterback in this offense heading back out to the field. He's thrown touchdown passes on his last two drives as he begins here first and 10. They'll start out here with a jet sweep. Give him a couple on the carry there, second and eight. 
Well, they gave up a few yards there, but all in all, I think it's a pretty nice job defensively against the Jets sweep. If they don't slow him up, he might take it to the house. So they'll take that play every time on the defensive side of the ball. Now second and eight at the 32-yard line. Purdy will set up to throw it here. Over the middle, complete to Samuel. And he's taken down right at the 45-yard line. 22 yards there, a first down. Good strong throw and catch right there. And so far in this game, the alleys have been open for them to get completions, and they're taking advantage of it. now to throw off the play action to the sideline and wow what a catch there he doesn't get a lot but he was able to get the feet down complete two yards on the pickup there and that's going to bring up second down he's been a busy man here in this one and they're showing off some nice footwork to stay in bounds and with those types of catches and the volume that we've seen in this game wouldn't you keep him busy as well i would of course you got to <laughs> keep throwing it to him he keeps making plays Throwing again on second down. Purdy eluding the pressure right. And that one into the hands of Ayuk downfield. And finally down he goes as they work it inside the 10 to the 7. That one good for 37 yards. One of the things that led this organization to commit to him as a starting quarterback as a rookie. His ability to keep his eyes downfield and make plays out of the pocket. Able to see the receiver while on the move and complete a really accurate throw. Now a chance to make that big play really hurt. It's first and goal just outside the five. They'll try to run with McCaffrey. He gets him a little bit closer. He takes it from the six inside the five to the four. Not a whole lot there on first and goal, and that's what you're looking for defensively. You'll certainly live with giving up just a yard or two in this situation. Two of their three red zone trips so far, they've come up empty on. They'll look to reverse that trend on second and goal. Shotgun now with Purdy. Buying time to his left. And they will not get the connection there. It's incomplete. Certainly appeared to take away his first read. And by the time he tried to look elsewhere and find an open target, the coverage was too good. That one falls incomplete. The Niners on third down. They've hit four of seven. This is third and goal. Now Purdy. That is caught by the tight end, Kittle. Touchdown, 49ers. A great play there. A beast in the red zone with his second touchdown of the game. And the 49ers have moved down in front. Well, to put it mildly, he's been able to dice up this secondary all game long, and this time, that was a missile that he threw into the end zone and adding another touchdown to his ledger. And I think we see these youngsters develop a lot quicker than we ever have because when they get started in this game, they're not just throwing passes around. They're reading coverages early, so now they're like seasoned pros earlier in their career. How about this one here? If they win this ball game, a game ball definitely coming from his head coach. The 49ers ready to kick it away, and here we go. From the six. And he returns this to the 22. And the Rams getting set to go now. They'll look for a drive to tie this up, down 21-14 as they have it first and 10.
on the counter. This is Akers. And not a whole lot of room to operate there on the first down run. He gets maybe three. They'd love to just strike back with a touchdown right here. And if it's a long play, so be it. But the main goal, get a couple of first downs. Run some plays, run some clock. Allow their defense to get a chance to catch their breath. Settle down and relax a little bit after they just gave up a score. From the 25 on second down, Stafford. Oh, he dropped it. They were looking for him in the middle third. He couldn't catch it. Now third down. I know we're just in the second quarter and there's a ways to go in this game, but that's his second drop. I'm wondering if that's a little bit of an alarm bell for them when they start calling plays on the offensive side of the ball. His eyes already looking upfield on that last one before he brought it in. Throwing on third down, Stafford. And down he goes, the 49ers get there. That is Nick Bosa from out on the edge who worked his way in for the sack. A CD, you know, so often we talk about quarterbacks holding on to the ball too long. Well, we can't say that there. He had no time to do much of anything. Yeah, that's when we turn to your lineman and say, uh, guys, can I get a little help here? And you have to ask politely because, remember, they're blocking for you the entire game. But as a quarterback, you've also got to have the clock running in your head when you need to get rid of the football. But this time, he had no chance. They were on him instantly. As we check the next-gen stats, you'll see he had precious little time to do anything with the football there. It's just a 32-yard punt with no return. And out will come the offense as they take over. And the 49ers getting set to trot out there. For this offense, Charles, remember the last time they were out here, marched it nearly the full length of the football field, and a lot of the attack went through the air, so now they're seeing if they can duplicate that performance. Okay, if I show my age a little bit, partner, because I can hear my high school coach, John Ford. I can hear his voice in my head. Laddie, when you put the ball in the air, three things can happen, and two of them are bad. But the way the game's being played now, this is just part of what they do. So I don't think they should change anything at all. They've been dominant. Keep throwing it around. And we've hit the two-minute mark in this first half of action. A reminder coming up here at halftime. We'll ship you off to Orlando. Jonathan Coachman will have first-half highlights and analysis from a back-and-forth first half that we've seen. From the 47, it's second and five. And throwing here, Purdy. And that is going to be incomplete as he led him a bit too much. I see the surprise in your face there, partner. That is a rare incompletion from him. He's been on point this entire game. He has percentage completion-wise way up. Not that time. They come up now third and five following the incomplete pass. Purdy looking to throw. Open man is Juwan Jennings. And he is going to have a 49ers first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. And with that completion, he's now going for 200 yards here in the first half. But a tough start for the secondary defensively. It is, and it's got to put a dent in their confidence. And, you know, you always want to keep that up and feel like you can always bounce back after plays. But with the kind of numbers he's putting up here, it's starting to wear on them a little bit, I think. So they're looking at each other and trying to figure out what defense will work and how can they play better without getting beat deep for big passes. Ball up to the 35 now as they come up on first and 10. There's Purdy on first and 10. And that is caught on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. The throw took him a little too far. It's second down. You could tell they wanted to get that ball downfield, but they had nothing working in the secondary, so he dropped it off to the running back. That one ended up incomplete. So after the incompletion on first, now second and ten. Once more, Purdy looking to throw. Throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Feels like they're getting caught in between here because they incompletions on first and second down. Now you got to worry a little bit about the clock because you prefer not to give them another shot here in the first half. But if you don't pick up the first down, guess what? You're likely going to have to. So back-to-back -back incompletions, and that has them staring at a third and ten. They'll look to throw again. And he'll be hit as he releases it. And that'll fall incomplete. They certainly didn't like when he saw it all from the coverage on his primary reads, and he didn't even have any luck trying to get back to his safety valve. 
give defense a credit. Coverage was in lockdown mode everywhere. Here's Mitch Wisnowski now on to punt. That one sails out of bounds. The side judge will walk it off. And he says it went out of bounds at the nine-yard line. Nice punt. So well done there. And these punters, they get more specialized and better each and every year, don't they? They sure do. And now it's really not the American punters. It's the Australian punters with their kicking academies and that flat drop and just kind of kicking the nose of the football. They're able to almost stop it where they want to like a good golfer can check one up. Stafford on first down. That'll be caught. It's caught. And past the 40 before he's out of bounds. They'll get 34 yards there. Well, that'll help get you out of danger. So much for playing it conservatively back towards your own goal line. That aggressive mentality, sometimes you can use it, and they did there against a defense who probably thought to themselves, there's no way they take a shot here this deep in their own territory. Just like that, out of danger and up past the 40 now for first and 10. Stafford now to throw. Incomplete, but a penalty flag is down in the backfield. Let's get the call. They were looking to throw, holding on the big right tackle. That's real simple, partner. Keep your hands inside in the chest area. You're probably okay. You get it out on the shoulders, get them wide. You just got to pick up a holding call. Stafford. He gets this into the hands of Cup once again. On the move past the 40. The Rams going to go ahead and use the first of their timeouts as they get the stoppage with a little over 50 seconds to go in the first half. A chance now to get even before the break as they come up first and goal. Here's Stafford. Now that would complete to Skorona. Now another timeout called for by the offense as the clock's going to stop with 47 seconds to go in half number one. So they get pushed back to the 11, and here's second and goal. Now it's Stafford. Got a man, and he hits him in stride. And he showed off the athletic juke. Good little gain there. Not a whole lot of real estate, but a nice carry. A touchdown saving tackle there. Now it's third and goal. To the air again, Stafford. He'll check this down to Akers out of the backfield. The Rams going to be forced to use their third and final timeout as they'll stop it with 14 seconds to go in this first half. So they won't get a touchdown, but here's a chance to at least get three to end the first half. From the left hash, he'll have to cut this at a tight angle. And his kick is good. And that'll bring him back within four. So three points on the board, as easy a field goal as you're going to get, but I can see you shaking your head. I love that peripheral vision of yours, partner, because to me, if it's the fourth quarter and you're up six, I get it. But now, even if you run and don't get in, He's still setting them up to go a long field, 98, 99-yard drive. How do you look at your defense and not give them that opportunity?
So not much time to speak of remaining in this first half as the kick's away. Fields it right around the goal line. And good coverage there on special teams as he'll get him down shy of the 20. So time perhaps for one final kneel down before they take this lead to the locker room. And with time running down, they go down to a knee. So we've hit halftime here in Santa Clara with the 49ers out in front. As we'll send you eastward to Orlando, standing by with that EA Sports halftime report now is Jonathan Coachman. Take it away, Coach. All right, Brandon, thanks very much. Welcome everyone to our brand new studios here in downtown Orlando and the EA Sports Halftime Report. First though, a check of the next-gen stats in that first half for the Rams. And it's been the passing game that's been the story. They have feasted on this secondary to the tune of 200 plus yards already through two quarters. Meanwhile, for the Niners, they too were able to take advantage of a soft secondary as both of these two teams really threw the ball at will in that first half. Okay, Coach, yeah, adjustments likely going to play a big role in this third quarter in what's been a tight contest so far. It's been a shootout so far. We'll see which defense can make the adjustments as we get back underway in the second half. This one fielded at the five. And he'll be tackled just shy of the 25. The Rams offense ready to begin quarter number three. Well, Charles, in that first half, we saw a fair amount of offense on both sides of the football. And now the team trailing here will start with it in the third quarter. And we both know this coach pretty darn well, don't we? Because his game planning is always on point. And now that he's getting the ball to start the second half, how about all the offense that you already referenced in the first half? He'll put that all together and come out with something really strong, I believe, to get things going here in the third quarter. On first and 10, Stafford. A quick pass to Cup. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. Five catches for him in that first half, and that's number six that we just saw. And also a first down. Turning those settling into the drive. Here. Looking at the first play attack in the field for a big gainer and a first down. One play has him up past the 40 already, and another first and 10. They'll go with Akers here up the middle, and nothing much materializing there on the first down run. He'll get a couple, and that's it. You've got to be impressed by that defensive front on reps like those. They were not being moved off the line, kept their shoulders square, and gave their teammates time to fight to the ball and limit that gain. The last run good for two. Here's second and eight. Off the fake to Akers, here's Stafford. Open man is Skoranek, he's got it. Just a gain of a couple there. And now third down and six to go. They are in need of six yards here if they hope to move the chains. Back to throw, Stafford. He's got Higby complete right side. And he'll be tackled on the other side of midfield at the 46-yard line. Many different ways to create space, but on that play, he did it with that big, wide body of his. Didn't get a whole lot of yardage on the play, but it did what it was supposed to, pick up a first down.
So from inside Niner territory now, this is first and 10 at the 46. Play action, Stafford. Now that'll be caught by Cup. And he'll be brought down on the other side of midfield at the 43. Again, at Stafford. He'll get this to Akers out of the backfield. And he'll go out of bounds right around the 40. So just three yards on the completion there. And that'll make it third down. Coming up here looking for three yards to pick up the first. Stafford on third down. Akers back-to-back -back catches. And he's going to be taken down at about the 33. Another catch for him there on this drive, Brandon. And it looks like they're going to utilize him out of the backfield any way they can. And that time they pick up a first down. So now on defense, do you assign a man to him and try and cover him before he gets going? Good shot, good shot. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. Now Stafford. Over the middle, that's hauled in by Cup. And he'll be brought down at about the 23-yard line. They like going to him in the slot. He catches another one. I think this comes under the heading of until they stop him, why not go back to him? He has something going really well. Great working relationship with the guy throwing the ball, and they keep making the connection. They'll come up now on second and a yard. They'll fake the give. Now Stafford. Toward the sideline. He will have the first down. Good catch. He was able to keep the feet in bounds. That one good for seven as this long drive continues and the chains move again. I think that's a big pickup for a first down because when you run a drag route against zone, you're sometimes asking for trouble because you might run into a defender. Yeah, well there they ran into a first down. Executed it to perfection. Kyle Shanahan doesn't care much for that last call, so out comes the red challenge flag. Did he keep those feet in bounds? That's the question they've got to decide. And I got to say, watching it in real time, it was awfully close. Yeah, it certainly looked like a heck of a catch because he didn't appear to bobble it, which could complicate things. But even with the benefit of replay, that's pretty tight. Now here's the call. So the decision to challenge does not pan out, and that's also going to cost him a timeout. So from the 17 now, here's a first and 10. Going to run the sweep here. This is Cup trying to run inside, but nothing there. Officially no gain on the play, and it's second down. But defensively, they had that one pretty well figured out. Yeah, one of the things about this play, it can be even more effective when you run a lot of motion, and there's plenty of times you don't hand it off. Looking to throw on second down. Stafford. And this is caught. He's got it. Touchdown, L.A. Ben Skoranek, a 16-yard touchdown. And the Rams have retaken a third-quarter lead. And they use that height on the outside to get the score. We've seen the evolution of the wide receivers. They've gotten taller and taller, but they've retained their quickness and their speed. It's a lethal combination. Always good to have wide receivers with height. Point after here coming up.
And that one gives them a three-point lead. A pretty long drive that time. 11 plays all told. And it winds up with a touchdown for Los Angeles. kickoff team on the field and here we go with the ball in the air this one fielded at the five and able to get this out to the 25 here's a look at the 49ers offense as they make their way out for their first possession of the second half and Charles it feels like we're set up for a good second half here came out of the locker room one score game now the lead has already changed hands well this offense they've got an opportunity right now to take that lead right back yeah and it feels like you're going back and forth almost a little bit like a tennis match right and we're just there you know our heads just keep moving which side has it which side's going to score how are they going to go out doing it a little bit of a challenge for each side trying to match each other Purdy's throw pulled in by Kittle They'll be dropped after a gain of about six across the 30 to the 31. Well, it's time for them to be good teammates right here. And what I mean by that is possess the ball for a little while. Get at least two first downs. Give their defense a chance to settle down a little bit after they give up a touchdown. They'll come up now second and four from the 31. They'll try and run right on the option. And he went nowhere. He'll lose yardage back to the 29. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. I know they'd love to take some heat off of that young quarterback, but so far, not much in the running game, and this won't help things either. A loss on that play. These guys have punted four times already, and they're staring at a fifth, barring a conversion here on third down. Now Purdy. And this is going to be incomplete. That pass just a little bit off. It looked like maybe he tried to force it in there. Game speed, always different, no matter what you do in practice. You can't simulate it, right? So your decision making, everything has to be a little bit quicker. Sometimes it can throw you off until you adjust. Here comes the 49ers punter now, as he's on for the fifth time here today. And he deserves a bronze leg as he gets this one away. That'll go as a 46-yard punt with a return of seven. Here comes Matthew Stafford now to lead his offense back out there. He really continues to pick apart this defense. Last drive, perfect, and it culminated in his third touchdown pass. As long as we've been doing this, how many times has a player in this type of a zone described the game as really slowed down? Yep. So right now, instead of warp speed, it's snail's just, pace. Oh, snail's pace for him, and he can do whatever he wants. Feels like he has all the time in the world to throw the ball, and his offensive line has been giving him that. And the result here, a pickup of eight. Leaves him with two to go on second down. First play of the drive. Let's give credit all around. Excellent blocking, but a guy carrying the ball. He was the finisher. A really nice run. Eight yards the tally on that first down run. Here's second and two. They'll fake it. Now Stafford. Quick hitter here. It's complete. They'll get three as the drive continues. It's a first down. To throw is Stafford. And his throw here is incomplete. Not his best throw there, but where we sit right now in the third quarter, he's had a pretty good game throwing the football. He certainly has, and it's not exactly at the point where we're doing four-minute offense yet, but they've got to think about, I'm not going to say milking the clock, but understanding clock management here on out. 
So line of scrimmage still the 39 on second and 10. Stafford. And his throw is going to be incomplete. He was looking for Cooper Cup there. And that takes us from second to third down. So many things have to go right for any passing play to work out. Quarterback has to understand the defense, deliver an accurate ball. Receiver has to concentrate and bring it in. Somewhere along the assembly line, something was off with that one. Throwing on third down, Stafford. And able to catch it on the left sideline, but they're going to rule him out of bounds. So it'll be incomplete, certainly one they'd like to have back as it brings up fourth down. Partner, the way this offense has marched up and down the field during this game, it's almost a surprise to see an incomplete pass on third down, isn't it? Yeah, they have had their foot on the gas all game long, but here finally stalling out. Oh, it's a wobbler here. So possession goes over here on the punt. The 49er offense now making their way out onto the field. And our game's hit a little bit of a lull here, a little bit of a snag. Punts on back-to-back -back drives. And old-school coaches don't necessarily mind that. Didn't turn it over, right? Didn't create a big play for the other team. Right now, what you're looking for is can you gain an advantage in field position? And that's what both teams are seeking right now. Yeah, they'll be seeking to gain that advantage here on this drive. Purdy now to throw off the play action. Dancing to his left. Throw across his body and it's intercepted. Picked off by Ernest Jones. And the Rams are going to take possession of the football. Now, and the tough thing is when he goes back and reviews the film, He'll see that he already escaped the pocket. He could have gotten more himself by using his legs, and that might have been the better choice there instead of challenging the zone. A miscalculation on his part, and he pays for it with the interception. The offense for Los Angeles returns to the field. Obviously not the intended goal last drive. They had to punt the football, but still, they've got the lead here, and now a chance to add on to that lead if they can get points on this drive. First and 10 upcoming. After the interception, here's Stafford. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes inbounds. A gain of eight there on the play. And they'll be left with second and a couple. If you're running out route, it's likely you're going to end up near the sideline. And what did we just see there? The toe tap. You got it. The benefits of practice. Toe tapping, foot dragging, picking it up and making sure it was a catch. To throw again on second down. Stafford. And oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. Not only did he have a chance to scan the field there, it felt like he had a chance to scan it twice. The protection was that good. Unfortunately for him, the coverage downfield, equally good. They'll try and run for this with Akers. Uh-oh, he is going nowhere as he is enveloped behind the line. That'll bring up fourth. They had the eight-yard gain on first down, but unable to do much from there. As usual, the hallmark of a good run defense, linebackers making plays near the line of scrimmage. Absolutely nowhere to run there. Here we go on fourth. Stafford yeah, able to find Higby. It's complete. And he is going to have the Rams first down as they manage to convert. And that'll keep the drive alive. That's a fourth down pickup of 10 yards and an opportunity certainly missed on the defensive side.
Now a play fake it at Stafford. Open man, Higby, the tight end. And he's going to be brought down at about the 16. They gave up the completion there, but this is what zone defenses count on. Catching the ball and not much run after the catch. Looking to throw again on second down. Stafford looking underneath. He's got Akers. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. Well, they certainly had success throughout this contest getting him the ball in the passing game. And there he picks up another first down. Whatever they saw going into this one, they've been able to capitalize on it. And no adjustment has been made to take it away. Now a first and 10 at the 11. Well, they'll run it here on the jet sweep. And he'll fight his way down inside the 10 to the nine yard line. Two yards on the pickup there. It'll be second and eight. Let's just make this one succinct. Nice job there, all 11 guys on defense. Diagnosing the jet sweep and putting it down. Ball at the nine on second and eight. Now it's Stafford. This is caught. Stafford to his oh, number one goal oh, count for oh, Los Angeles oh, first. It's a game of matchups, and that's why you take your receivers and move them around a bunch, especially your best guys. And when they work out of the slot, you often hear the coaches talk about how great it is because it gives you a two-way go. You can break out or you can break in. That makes it hard to defend. Akers. He is going nowhere in a hurry as he is going to lose yardage here in a big way. And we're going to stop play here at least momentarily. It looks like there is a 49er who's in some discomfort. Hopefully, obviously nothing serious here. Medical staff, though, going to take a peek and we'll take a break. at the five-yard line now, second and goal. Here's Stafford. Oh, the ball comes out on the hit, but they'll say it's incomplete. That one was tipped up in the air and fortunately fell away for the defense because if the offense is able to grab that one, that's a short little jaunt into the end zone because there's not enough reaction time off of a tip ball for the defense to rally and make a tackle. They were very fortunate on that play. So third and goal and the 49er faithful making some noise for their defense. A shotgun snap for Stafford. And it's complete. He's got it in the end zone. Touchdown Rams. Fourth touchdown pass of the game for Matthew Stafford. And they are able to add on to their advantage. Circle that drive because that might be one to remember. Well executed to give them a little cushion. Well, let's take it into the boxing ring. You talk about them commanding it, keeping the fight where they wanted to, whether it was in the center of the ring or putting them on the ropes because it was jab, jab, jab. And finally, the haymaker to put that drive away. Extra point right down the middle. And his guys will take a 10-point lead. So that one a long 11-play drive. And the result for the Rams, a touchdown. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. Fielded just outside the goal line. 
And a good return as he'll be stopped just shy of the 30-yard line. San Francisco set to go on offense once more. And we'll see if they can bounce back from that last drive. In particular, if they can bounce back at the quarterback position, Charles, after throwing their first interception of the ball game. Yeah, and some guys, you know they're going to want to try and get a big play right away and take control back. Others, they're going to look to hit a couple shorter passes and get a little momentum back that way. But for the defense, that goal's not changing a bit. They want another pick. You're exactly right about that. In fact, you've got to watch them a little bit because in coverage, they may cut down their gaps a little bit, maybe their splits a little bit in order to try and get to the ball even faster. Uh, with a rookie quarterback out there, you're definitely going to find out how he handles adversity because this one so far hasn't gone according to plan. He's got to fight through it and show him what he's made of. Second and ten here as we roll along in quarter number three from Santa Clara. A handoff, McCaffrey running right. They do get a couple, but they'll be left staring at a third and eight coming up. Well, they still have time to get them established, but in my estimation, they've got to pick up the urgency here. They've got to get quickly in and out of the huddle and run off a bunch more plays. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. The throwing here, Purdy. Open man is Samuel, complete. And they're going to mark him down short, maybe by about a yard, if that. That'll go for a gain of seven, and it'll be fourth down. Well, it looks like they got what they wanted. They got the completion, but they weren't able to break any tackles or gain nearly enough yardage to pick up the first down. Now to be fourth and short. Here comes the 49ers punter now, as they're forced to kick for the sixth time today. And a nice job here on special teams. This will be down inside the 10 at the 8-yard line. Well, someone's going to be happy with that effort. You know who else is going to be happy? His defense. Absolutely. <laughs> He's created a very long field for that offense to try to traverse. And he got some help from Mr. Football there, checking up nicely. Good English on that punt. On first down at Stafford. He's got Cooper Cup on the slant. And he's taken down, but not before he gets this across the 25-yard line. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. I'll tell you what, a lot of those mid-range throws have been available because sometimes teams get too concerned about the deep ball and they leave too much space in front of them. And these guys have been taking advantage so far. On first down, Stafford here. And that one not to be. It's incomplete. So they couldn't hook up as time has now run out on this third quarter of play. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. Once again, they'll come up on the 26-yard line, second and 10. On the give, this is Akers. 53 yards rushing for him now to this point. Brandon, I've got to think this offensive line has got some smiles on its faces. And, and I know it sounds crazy, but they practiced for this back in training camp. They knew they'd be in situations where it'd be extra defenders in the box coming after them, trying to keep them from locking down a game. Right now, they want to show the world they're up to the challenge. Now Stafford. And that is incomplete. 
critical play in this football game because if they pick up the first there, that clock keeps rolling. Has to be a little frustrating for them because they know that if they pick up a first down there and continue to eat away at the clock, really increases their chances of closing this one out. Now they're likely going to have to give the football up and sweat it out on the sideline. Here comes the Rams punter now as he's on to kick it away. Fair catch called for and made at about the 32-yard line. It's just a 30-yard punt that time, no return. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. Their defense was able to force the punt. That's the good news, but this is still a two-score game, and they need points on this drive and in a relatively quick manner. So they'll come up first and 10 now from the 33. The drive begins with a run by McCaffrey. Oh, nice move. <laughs> and they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. That'll be a pickup of 10 as they try to recover from this 10-point deficit. Most of their damage has been done through the air. I mean, they've rung the bell three times with passing touchdowns, but guess what? Ground game has not been neglected. Nice little burst right there. Purdy off the play fake. This will be caught at Samuel. And he's going to get this all the way down inside the 35. 23 yards, the final tally. Well, every drive from here out is definitely crucial and critical. They know that they need to get at least three here to get it back to a one-score game. But I can't imagine that in their huddle that they're thinking at all about getting a field goal. They want to get into the end zone and then try and get the ball back again. So signs of life in what's been a dormant offense in this second half. Here's first and 10. McCaffrey running up the middle. And some strong running there as he's down just shy of the 20 on the edge of the red zone. Another nice game, 13 yards that time and another first down. Would you say this offense is locked in right now? They're having no trouble on this drive. What is it, three plays, three first downs? Yeah, you talk about on the march. They keep this up. They'll get to that end zone real fast. Purdy looking to throw on first down here. That's Samuel caught left side. And he's going to be marked down just outside the 10. And with that last play, he's now up over that 300-yard mark. And in today's NFL, it almost feels routine. And I hate that when you talk about a 300-yard passing game. To me, 300 yards still signifies excellence, and he's achieved that in this performance. Up the gut, McCaffrey. And he's going to take it in. Touchdown, San Francisco. Christian McCaffrey with his second touchdown of the afternoon. And the 49ers have made it a one-score game again here in the fourth. A solid blocking up front from the guys on the offensive line allowed him to get in for the touchdown. Yeah, some might say that the guys on the offensive line were in concert. I used to have a coach who called it marrying up, meaning when you get on a guy, you just stay right there. Each guy has his own assignment. That allowed the runner to make the big move towards the end zone. Extra point splits the uprights. And now things get a bit more interesting here in this fourth quarter.
The 49ers ready to kick it away, and here we go. This one taken just inside the 10. And he takes this near the 25, just a little pass there, call it the 26. L.A. set to take over again on offense. Their lead back down to one score after the touchdown a moment ago. First down's a must on this drive as they start out here first and 10. Stafford. And the Niners get there and bring him down. Nick Bosa able to get in there for his second sack of the afternoon. Impressive individual effort there. No one was going to stop him around the edge. Yeah, no doubt about it. And that's why if you play in a 4-3 base and you're a defensive end, that's why you get the big bucks. They count on you to do everything. Defend the run and, of course, get to the quarterback. Work to be done here on second and 16 after the sack. On the handoff, it's Akers. And he'll be tackled at the 23 after a gain of three. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Let's go. Let's go. 49ers have an extra defensive back on the field. A nickel set for third down. Stafford now to throw. Got an open man finding Jefferson. And he is going to have a Rams first down as they're able to get the third down conversion. He's been the go-to guy. They needed a big play there on third down. Went his way. It worked out. Doesn't matter whether they've scouted it or that they think he's going to get the ball. He has a knack for finding his way open and completing the connection. Now a first down throw, Stafford. Sideline throw, it's complete. And a nice job there of keeping the toes in bounds. So give them five yards there on the pitch and catch, and it'll be second down. Let's make this one simple. What a catch, especially the finishing part of getting his feet in bounds, toe tapping, and of course, foot dragging. Little tapestry, if you will. Oh, I like it. Second down and five. On the ground, it's Akers. And he'll be brought down at the 48-yard line. They got five through the air last play. Now five on the ground, first and ten. I know we're in the era of wide open football, a lot of spread formations, more space. But there's still a spot for power football. We just saw some of it right there. How about that run? Yeah, breaking the tackle. And, you know, late in this game, he wants a football in his hands. He's had a good day. On first and ten, Stafford. Nothing open downfield, so he'll throw it away. This could be the start of a nice stand from this defense now after getting walked backwards on this drive. Come through with another one here, and you have them staring at a third and long, and that puts the defense in a position to dictate to the offense. An incomplete pass on first down. That leads to a second and ten. Here's Akers. And he'll be taken down right around the 41-yard line. 68 yards on the ground for him so far. This has been an up and down, back and forth type of a game, hasn't it? Maybe this long drive will take a little bit of the wind out of their sails, kind of settle things down a little bit. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Now whistles and a flag down. I think one of the Rams linemen might have moved. The crowd's not doing that O-line any favors. Home field advantage is really kicking in, making it very difficult for them to hear the snap count. 
Now after the false start, they need eight yards here on third down. Back to throw, Stafford. And look at this, they get the turnover they needed, it's intercepted. Picked up by Talanoa Hufanga. And the 49ers are right back in this football game. Partner, I think this one won't arrive very simply because he overestimated his arm strength and his ability to fit it anywhere he wants to. A lot of quarterbacks do that and often pay the price. Out on the field now, here come the 49ers. A golden opportunity for them now following the interception. They need to try to at least get three. Obviously, a touchdown puts them in a much more secure position. Good starting field position for them here as they come up first and 10 at the 45. Now on first down, it's Purdy. He'll get this into the hands of Ayu. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work this to the 45. Options galore here, second and a few inches. They'll give it up to McCaffrey, and he is met in his tracks behind the line of scrimmage. Officially, it will go as a one-yard loss, and that's going to lead to a third down. Sometimes you just sit back and marvel at what he can do defensively. Speed, strength, quickness, he's the whole package, and that package just wrapped up the runner for a loss. A field goal from this spot likely out of the question. They've got to get closer here on third down. A throw there, but that's going to wind up incomplete. How about this defense? They came up with a couple big plays in this sequence, and none better than the one right there, forcing the incompletion and bringing up fourth down. They'll run for it. McCaffrey. And a pretty good burst right there as he'll take this down to the 33. The conversion is successful with a sizable gain of 13, and the decision to go for it looks like a smart one. Okay, you and I are sitting up here getting ready to analyze whether they should go for it or not. Did you see the quarterback just point to the sideline and say, uh-uh, everybody back, I've got this call. Well, you knew this side of the field, they're in plus territory, fourth and one. He wasn't coming off the field. No, he wasn't coming off the field, and he wasn't letting the offense go with him at all. He said, we're staying out here, and we're picking this one up. That's some leadership right there. Back to the ground on first, it's McCaffrey. And he's gonna get seven out of this before being taken down at the 27. You know what really fires up offensive linemen? When the guy that is carrying the ball behind them can create his own space and break a tackle along the way. So they'll come up after the gain of seven on a second and three. They go play action here. Purdy gets this one to use check. Nine yards to pick up there, and it's a first down. Well, they've certainly spread the ball around so far, but they're definitely getting everyone involved now when you're throwing it to the fullback. Just shows how versatile this offense is and how everyone is a threat. So from inside the 20, here's first and 10 at the 18. From the shotgun to McCaffrey. And brought down, but not before they get it inside the 10 to the 7. 84 yards rushing for him now as he has been tremendous all day long. Another carry for their leader and a good one. It's crunch time. They'll need him to continue to be productive in both the run and passing game in order for them to try and snatch a victory. Only way to get the lead here, of course, with a touchdown. And that's what they're gunning for on first and goal. 
They'll run with Mitchell. And they'll be driven back here, losing yardage to the nine. That's going to go as a loss of one on first down. I thought he did a nice job there setting an edge and make sure nothing could get to the outside. But he decided that wasn't enough for him. Worked his way back inside and made the tackle on the ball carrier. Now from the nine, here's second and goal. Back to throw, Purdy. Got a man right side, it's McCaffrey. And he is going to lose yardage here. They'll wind up losing three here on the play, and that'll bring up a third down and goal. Really good defensive effort. They were all over that little swing pass out to the right side before lost yardage. Terrific read, better execution, and done with a lot of enthusiasm, wasn't it? Absolutely. They saw it all the way, ran to the football, and cause a nice play for lost yardage. And now can they reverse the trend on third and goal with the last two plays having gone backwards. Purdy looking to throw. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, that's a defensive coordinator's got to be happy with that result. They took away all options downfield and forced the incompletion. So here we go. Maybe the biggest kick of the game forthcoming from the right hash, and this one just a chippy. And his kick is good. And in the fourth quarter, this game is tied. I tell you, the life of a kicker. He has not been called on the entire game. He's over there by the net, but they send him out here in the fourth quarter and say, hey, go tie the game, will you? And guess what? He comes through. I just don't know how they do it. I really don't. These cats are a different breed from you and me. That's a pressure kick, but that one was never in doubt. Set to go now with the kickoff. These two teams all even again as we continue in this wild fourth quarter. Fielded right around the eight. And he'll take it up past the 25 to the 26-yard line. And now this offense comes back out onto the field. Well, the bad news, they had the turnover last time. The good news, their defense only surrendered three. So now we are set up for a great finish, all tied here in the fourth. Stafford and the Rams come up first and 10 at their own 26. They'll begin on the ground with Akers. And he'll take this ahead for about four. Second down coming up. Well, on every play call, you realize it's not going to go for a touchdown. So a lot of your calls are setting things up for maybe later in the game. Trying to establish the inside run. Run with toughness now. Hopefully get to the perimeter later. And let's face it, you could do worse than a four-yard run on first down. From the 30 on second down, Stafford. That would complete to Skoranek. And he's going to be taken down. Plus, there's a penalty flag in the backfield. They may get 15 more on top of this. Well, that frustration, Charles, it's been building on the defensive side of the ball. And unfortunately there, it turns into a roughing the passer penalty. Yeah, and they should be frustrated because he's picked them apart the entire game. But it's got to come out in a different way. You can't hit him illegally. Stop him downfield the way you're supposed to. And he's got this to Jefferson. And he'll be taken down here just shy of the 30. Tell you what, he's been able to put the ball in some tight spots all game long. That throw, no different. Yeah, a lot of people would call it a gutsy type of a throw. I think he looks at it as, I can do it, so it's not that big of a deal to me, and I'm going to keep firing. Getting down to the good stuff. All tied with two minutes remaining on EA Sports. So it's Rams football here as we get you reset. Back-to-back -back good plays have them on the move on first down. 
Stafford going to give this to Akers. A short gain here, maybe a yard to the 29. I like the call there because that was one to take time off the clock and get them closer to getting out of here with a W. In the mind of the play caller, all you want to hear is tick, tick, tick. The run only got a yard. Here's second and nine. They'll go again here with Akers. And he'll get this one down to about the 27. They follow up the first down one yard run with a minimal gain of two. I like it. I like the call. Still an opportunity to run the football and chew up a little more time off the clock. They got to get it to the 21 here on third down. They give up the middle to Akers. And just good downhill running there as he'll take this to the 15-yard line. Now San Francisco going to call their second timeout as they stop it here with a minute seven remaining. Line of scrimmage, the 15. It's first and 10. Now a run with Akers. And power running here down to the six-yard line. Now the defense will burn their third and final timeout as they get the stoppage with just over a minute to go in the game. Ball at the six here as they work with a second and two. They'll go with Akers here up the middle. And he stopped immediately there. No gain on the play, and now they're faced with a third and one. They've called his number a lot this afternoon. You wonder how much tread is left on those tires. We certainly do, but I always think back to one of my favorite coaches in the NFL. And he used to have a meeting with his running backs every year in the offseason and say, look, as many times as you're going to carry the ball, you should be able to carry it one more time. So make sure you get in shape. He didn't get the touchdown, but he did get the first down as he's tackled at the one. Give him the third down conversion, five yards on the play. A game-winning field goal would be a chip shot from here. Let's see how they play it on first and goal. They'll run here with Akers. Now the Rams will signal for a timeout their second as the clock will stop with just under 30 seconds left to go. Back at the five-yard line now, second and goal. On the counter, this is Akers. And the hole closes quickly here. He can fight only to about the four. Call it a gain of a yard as they get a little bit closer here. It's third and goal. Well, Brandon, we always know that once you score one touchdown, you you're, two. <laughs> you're without a doubt. And so far today, he's got one, but was denied as he tried to get the second one. And it is good! He splits the uprights on the chip shot, and the Rams have won the game! Well, this ball game was close throughout. Remember, it was neck and neck at intermission, neck and neck at the end, but a great job to come in here in a tough environment, Charles, and get the victory. Yeah, tough environment indeed. How about all the people we can hear shouting from their seats right below us, partner? They weren't real happy that their team didn't keep the home field. How about how these visitors came in, calmed every step of the way, even with all the pressure, and found a way to get out of here with a win.